Hallelujah. 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 Emmanuel. 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 If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for our nation, who can be against her? Greet your neighbor, good morning and win today. Greet your other neighbor, good morning and win today. And greet the viewers all over the world, good morning and win today. Hallelujah. Yes, you are welcome to the presence of God in Jesus' name. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, it is time for God's word. As we all know, God does nothing without his word. The word of God is spirit and life. The word of God is living and powerful. It is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is pure and therefore very sure. Tell your neighbor, the word of God is pure and therefore very sure. So don't doubt God's word. Because God's word is pure. Don't doubt God's word. Tell anybody, don't doubt God's word. Don't doubt God's word. Yes, and this will be the title of our message for today. Don't doubt God's word. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew. Chapter 3. I'll start my reading from verse 16 to 17. And also chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4. The book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. When he had been baptized... Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Verse 4, which is the last verse. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. From what we've just read, the devil came to our Lord and Savior Jesus, asking him to turn stone to bread. But looking at it, there is nothing wrong in turning the stone to bread. But the motive behind turning the stone to bread was wrong. Satan wanted Jesus to doubt God's word. Take note of what the devil said. He said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. He simply wanted him to doubt God's word, which says, this is my beloved son. He wanted Jesus to doubt God's love for him. The Bible makes us to understand that God loves us so much 
that he gave his only begotten son for us to live a new life. The same way he tempted our Lord and Savior Jesus, he is also asking every one of us today, are you sure that God loves you? Are you sure God loves you? If God loves you, why are you sick? Why all these troubles? Why the persecution? Why are the blessings not coming? Why is this and that happening to you? People of God, remember, the devil comes to shake our faith in God's word and to bring us to question the truth of the word. One of Satan's tactics is to get you to doubt God's word. It tries to get you to forget all that God has given you and to focus on what you don't have at present. One of Satan's main aim in tempting you as a child of God is to overthrow your position as a child of God. Cut your dependence on God, your duty to God, and your communion with God. That you are a child of God does not mean you are immune to tests and trials. In fact, as long as you have flesh, there are things that will continuously poke you. Things will continue to poke you, that is, challenge you. You will be tested and tried. God's love never promised to keep us away from tests and trials, but to see us through them. If we receive so much comfort from God, shall we not receive some affliction, pain, headaches, or temptation, which we serve as a check to our comfort? But today, many of us easily give in to the temptation to doubt when we do not receive an immediate answer to our requests. We immediately doubt God's word when we do not receive an immediate answer to our requests. We are used to only acknowledging the goodness of God. We are used to only acknowledging the immediate goodness of God we forget about all he has done for us in the past. Thereafter, we never mention the blessings, the miracles that we have received in the past. Such was the case of the children of Israel. They forgot how God Almighty brought them out of the land of slavery. And because they had forgotten what God Almighty did for them in the past, they doubted God's word. They doubted God's ability to fulfill his word, to give them the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. God's plan for the children of Israel was not for them to spend more than a year in the wilderness, but because they doubted God's word, they ended up spending 40 years in the wilderness. They limited what God could do in their lives because they doubted his word. When you doubt God's word, you limit what he can do in your life. Tell your neighbor, when you doubt God's word, you limit what he can do in your life. Therefore, don't doubt God's word. Don't doubt God's word. God's word is pure and therefore very sure. Terrible, don't doubt God's word. 
Don't doubt God's word. God's word is real, authentic, and powerful. People of God, there is nothing more ridiculous than to allow our present situation to cause us to doubt God's word. There is nothing more ridiculous to allow our present circumstance to cause us to doubt the fulfillment of God's word, of God's promise in our life. If the situation you are in does not guarantee the fulfillment of God's word in your life, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't listen to the language of your situation. Remember, your situation has a language. Sometimes it keeps talking to you, provoking you, telling you, you are not a child of God. God does not love you. Give up. The word is not true. Barrenness for years or difficulty in having the fruit of the womb can change some people's faith to question the truth of the word, which says you shall be blessed Above all people, there shall not be a male or a female barren among you. Don't doubt God's word. Don't allow your situation to cause you to doubt God's word. When you are struggling with doubt, take time to remember how God Almighty has worked in your life. And as you recall God's track record, you will grow confidence that your present problem will be solved by God. Let's take a look at the life of Father Abraham. Father Abraham never doubted that God Almighty will fulfill his promise. Despite the weakness of his body, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He never doubted because he knows that no word of God is void of fulfillment. He simply looked to God, obeyed him, and waited for him to fulfill his word. What is the situation? What are you going through? In cases of prolonged, uncomfortable circumstance, one seems to doubt God's ability to fulfill his word. What are the unfavorable circumstances? Like sickness, poverty, persecution, hatred. One seems to doubt God's ability to fulfill his word. And how do we overcome this temptation to doubt God's word? Our Lord and Savior Jesus has given us the battle plan on how to overcome the temptation to doubt. By speaking the word aloud directly to the tempter. Our Lord and Savior Jesus used scripture to counter Satan's attack, and so should we. Tell your neighbor, our Lord and Savior Jesus used scripture to counter Satan's attack, and so should you. Knowing and obeying God's word is an effective weapon against the temptation to doubt. God's word is the only offensive and defensive weapon provided in the Christian armor. And for us to use it effectively, 
we must understand it and have faith in God's promises. Therefore, take time to splash around in God's word. Take time to splash around in God's word to absorb it and to discover what God Almighty has to say to you each day because your life depends on knowing it. Your life depends on knowing God's word. People of God, here is an encouragement for you. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, not a word failed of any good thing that the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass. God's word says you are healed. You are delivered. You are saved. You are no longer condemned. You are redeemed. Defeat and failure are things of the past. Jesus Christ is your friend in life. You are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Take the people of God. None of these good words that God has spoken to us will fail. Everything will come to pass if only we can believe and rest unconditionally on God's word. Tell so anybody, you must believe. You must believe and rest unconditionally on God's word. And may the Lord bless his word in the midst of your heart in Jesus' name. Remember, God loves you. I remain blessed in Jesus' name.